Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the enantiotopic and diastereotopic hydrogens. Let us take one structure like this and this is a simple propanoic acid and at the second carbon, we can observe the two hydrogens. So since it is having the two similar groups, now this carbon is not chiral and it is optically inactive. Suppose one of these hydrogen group is going to be replaced with the amine group, then the structure becomes like this. Now since it is having the amine group at the alpha position, this is the alpha amino acid that is the alanine. Now because of this amino group, the alpha carbon becomes chiral, therefore alanine is optically active. In this way, an optically inactive compound is going to optically active compound by removal of the hydrogen. And here you can see that in the propanoic acid, two hydrogens are there and any of the hydrogen can be replaced with the amine group to produce the alanine, which is optically active. And since alanine is optically active, it can exist as the pair of enantiomers. And so here the propanoic acid is having the two hydrogens which are equivalent and anyone can be removed to produce the enantiomers. Now these hydrogens are called as enantiotropic hydrogens. So enantiotropic hydrogens produce the enantiomers when they are going to be replaced by a different group. Let us take another example. This is the butanoic acid. Now in this butanoic acid, here at this carbon, we can observe the two hydrogens. And what about these hydrogens? Suppose if one of the hydrogen is going to be replaced by another group, then it gives a structure like this. And now because of the presence of a different group, which is represented by letter X, now this carbon becomes chiral. Therefore, it's optically active and it results in the formation of enantiomers. So these hydrogens are again the enantiotropic hydrogens. Similarly, we can observe the other two hydrogens on the second carbon. And again, suppose one of the hydrogen is going to be replaced with the another group X, then it can produce a structure like this. Now here the second carbon is chiral, so it's optically active and it can exist as the pair of enantiomers. So again, what are the hydrogens attached at the second carbon are enantiotropic hydrogens. In this way, the butanoic acid and the enantiotropic hydrogens at the second carbon as well as at the third carbon. But here, which hydrogen is going to be preferentially removed and which type of isomer is going to be formed by removal of these hydrogens. So what is the reactivity and stereochemistry involved with these enantiotropic hydrogens? Let us take the example of the carboxylic acid. Now here you can observe at the second carbon it is having the two hydrogens and these hydrogens are the enantiotropic hydrogens because if anyone is going to be removed it produces the chiral carbon resulting in the enantiomers. Suppose this hydrogen is going to be replaced, then it can produce a structure like this. And if this hydrogen is going to be replaced, it can produce a structure like this. And let us assume that the first structure results in the formation of R isomer. Then this hydrogen is called as pro R hydrogen. So pro R hydrogen is a hydrogen which on replacement with a different group results in the R isomer. Similarly, the second product will be S isomer because if one is R isomer, the second will be S isomer as the products are enantiomers. Now, since this replacement of this hydrogen results in the S isomer, this hydrogen is called as pro S hydrogen. In this way, the enantiotopic hydrogens may result in either R isomer or S isomer. If it results in the R isomer, it is called as pro R hydrogen. If it results in the S isomer, it is called as pro S hydrogen. Let us take the example of carboxylic acid. Now this carboxylic acid is having the enantiotropic hydrogens. Suppose this is going to be reacted with the red phosphorus and bromine. Then it results in the alpha bromo carboxylic acid. Now this product is further reacted with the ammonium hydroxide. Then it results in one of the alpha amino acid. In this way, carboxylic acids can be converted to amino acids through the one of the reaction HVZ reaction. So HVZ reaction is a conversion of the carboxylic acids into the alpha bromo carboxylic acids. These alpha bromo carboxylic acids when they are reacted with the ammonium hydroxide, they can produce the amino acids. But here which type of amino acid is going to be found whether D amino acid or L amino acid. Now if we consider the carboxylic acid here, these are the enantiotropic hydrogens. Suppose these two hydrogens are having the different reactivity and let us indicate uh, one by the A and another with the B. Now, if suppose A is going to be removed, then it can produce a product like this where the hydrogen represented by A is replaced with the NH2 group and it is going to produce one of the amino acid and other hydrogen is uh, retained within the structure. 
Suppose the hydrogen type B is going to be removed, then it produces the another strike share. Here, the NH2 group is going to replace the hydrogen B, and hydrogen type A is still retained within the strike share. Now you can easily observe that the products are enantiomers, and which product is the major product? So here, in this case, these products are equally formed. Therefore, the product is a racemic mixture. So it forms the 50% of the DMN acid and 50% of the LMN acid. Why it is like that? Because these enantiotropic hydrogens are equally reactive. So any of these hydrogens can be equally replaced so that they are going to produce both of the isomers resulting in the racemic mixture. So enantiotropic hydrogens are chemically equivalent. This can be observed even in the NMR where the enantiotropic protons produce the same signal in the NMR. Let us take the case of the butanoic acid. Now, how many proton NMR signals can be observed in the butanoic acid? In order to identify the NMR signals in the proton NMR, we have to identify the protons which are not chemically equivalent. That means which are connected by different way. So here, this is the one type of proton which is a CH3 proton. And this is a another type of proton which is a CH2 proton. And this is also CH2 proton. And this is another CH2 proton which is attached to the COOH. Similarly, this is the another CH2 proton. And finally, this is the acidic proton. In this, in this structure, we can observe the four different NMR signals. So here, what are the pair of protons which are indicated by the letter B or enantiotopic protons? Similarly, what are the other pair of protons which are indicated by letter C are again the enantiotopic protons. So enantiotopic protons give the same signal in the NMR, which indicates that the enantiotopic protons are equivalent in the NMR spectroscopy. So enantiotopic protons are chemically equivalent and they show the same chemical reactivity. That's why they show the same signal in the NMR spectroscopy. But this is true in the a chiral reagents. When we use the chiral reagents, these enantiotopic protons behave in different way. For example, let us take an alcohol. Now this alcohol is having the enantiotopic hydrogens. So this is one hydrogen and this is another hydrogen. And let us indicate these hydrogens with the letter A and B. Normally we are expecting that these protons are equivalent and they show the same reactivity towards the chemical reactions. But suppose this Alcohol is reacted with an enzyme. Now it is not a chemical reaction. It is an enzymatic reaction. Now this enzyme is selectively removing the hydrogen A such that it is going to produce a product like this. And within this product, the B hydrogen is retained. And this is the major product. That means enzymes are having a selectivity towards a particular type of hydrogen. So in presence of enzymes, enantiotropic hydrogens differ in their reactivity. And we know that enzymes are chiral compounds. So in presence of a chiral reagent, the enantiotopic hydrogens are different. So what we can conclude that, so enantiotopic hydrogens are chemically equivalent, but in presence of chiral reagent only, they are different. Now let us see the diastereotropic hydrogens. Let us take one example here. Now here you can observe that the third carbon is chiral because it is attached with the four different groups. But the second carbon is attached with the two hydrogens, so it is not chiral. And let us see what happens if any of these hydrogen is going to be removed. Let us indicate one of the hydrogen with A and another hydrogen with the B. Suppose the A hydrogen is going to be replaced by different group, then what happens? It can give the product like this. Similarly, if we are going to remove the B hydrogen, it can give the product like this. Now, what is the relation between these two products? If you carefully observe, the second part of the structures are completely similar in both of the products because the configuration is not changed at the third carbon and reaction takes place only at the second carbon. So these two structures are having the opposite configuration at the second carbon but same configuration at the third carbon. So they are not the mirror images. Therefore, they are the diastereomers. Now when these hydrogens are going to be removed, they are going to produce a two products which are not mirror images of each other and they are the diastereomers. So that's why these hydrogens are called as diastereotopic hydrogens. Similarly, let us take another example. This is an alkene and here you can observe the two hydrogens and let us see what happens when these hydrogens are going to be removed. Again, let us label these hydrogens. This is A and this is B. 
now if the a is going to be removed it's going to give the product like this and now b is going to be removed it gives the product like this what is the relation between these two again you can observe that if one is e isomer and there will be z isomer so both of these are the diastereomers therefore these hydrogens are again the diastereotopic hydrogens in this way diastereotopic hydrogens results in the formation of diastereomers when they are going to be replaced with a different group but what about the reactivity of these diastereotopic hydrogens whether they are equivalent or not in order to understand this let us take a compound like this now here the third carbon is optically active but at the second carbon it is attached with the two different hydrogens so the hydrogens at the second carbon are diastereotopic hydrogens now let us represent these compounds as that the two diastereotopic hydrogens are going to be removed in the two different reactions and here in the first structure we are going to remove the hydrogen along with the bromine so similarly in the second structure we are going to remove the another hydrogen along with the bromine so in the first structure when the hydrogen bromide is going to be removed it can produce a product like this and this is nothing but the trans to butene similarly in the second structure if you are going to remove the hydrogen bromide it can produce a product like this and this is nothing but the cis to butene in both of the structures the bromine is going to be removed from the same configuration but the hydrogen is going to be removed from the different configurations so in the first structure it produces a trans to butene and the second structure it produces a cis to butene which will be the major product as we know that trans to butene is more stable than the cis to butene trans to butene will be formed as the major product that means the first structure he is having the more reactivity compared to the second structure which indicates that these diastereotopic hydrogens are not equivalent in their chemical rate of reactivity so the diastereotopic hydrogens are chemically non equivalent again we can observe this with the help of nmr spectroscopy so this carbon is chiral carbon that's why the second carbon is having the diastereotopic protons now how many nmr signals are possible so ch3 is one signal and here this hydrogen is second signal similarly this hydrogen is a third signal but what about the other diastereotopic proton this will give the different signal in the nmr because this is a diastereotopic proton this may be either above or below the plane compared with the other diastereotopic proton so here it will give the different signal and similarly a stick proton will give the another signal so total 1h nmr signals in this compound is 5 you can observe that in the enantiotropic hydrogens it is only 4 but in case of diastereotopic hydrogens it gives the five signals because these diastereotopic protons are chemically not equivalent as well as magnetically not equivalent so what we can conclude that diastereotopic protons are not equivalent in the nmr spectroscopy so that's about this enantiotropic and diastereotopic protons enantiotropic protons are chemically equivalent so they give the same nmr signal but in the chiral reagent only they are somewhat different on the other hand diastereotopic protons are chemically not equivalent as well as magnetically not equivalent therefore they give the different nmr signals so that's for today hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video